Hey guys, this is Nas. I'm back with another video about Combines Publishers. If you're an iOS developer transitioning your code to use the Combine framework, you may have some asynchronous code somewhere in your app that you would like to convert. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could migrate your closure-based event handling code to use the Future Publisher. If you're familiar with promises and future in JavaScript, then working with Combine's future is going to be familiar. Future is a publisher that publishes a single value. When the future finishes, you can either set it up to just finish without a value or with a value. You can set never as the error type or pass an error type indicating an error can occur in the future. Now let us migrate our asynchronous code to use future. An asynchronous code is a code that completes at a later time. Normally, you have a closure and a handler parameter that will be executed when the asynchronous task completes. The time it can take could be milliseconds or a few seconds after the task has started. I created a third-party library class to simulate asynchronous tasks using closures and the future publisher. In the perform async action method, I use dispatch queues async after method to call the completion handler after a couple of seconds to simulate an asynchronous task. In a real-world app, this could be some network requests your app would do to fetch some data from a remote server. If I scroll up and look at the perform async task method, this is where we integrate the label with the async task. When this method is called, then the label will display a loading indicator text. Then when the task finishes, the task will update to a completed state. So this is how our closure-based async task is working before we migrate it to use a future publisher. In the perform async action future method, you can see the future publisher is used to wrap the dispatch queues async after method. This method returns a future, and I set it to return void, which means I'm not expecting it to return a value. Our error generic parameter is set to never which means this future will not report any error. So you as the developer, you will be the one to set what type of object your future will return and if it returns an error or not. Now that we have set up our method to return a future, next we need to create a future and wrap the async task. First, you create a future as shown in the code. Then we use the promise object to cause a failure or a success. Since we do not expect an error to happen, so we just pass a success result for this method. If we head over to the perform async action future error, this is a method that demonstrates how to publish a failed result. We pass the results failure case and pass an error type. Here I have a custom error called async error with a case that accepts a string. If I scroll to the top and look at the perform future task method, I'm calling the perform async action future method. Since it returns a future publisher, I can call the sync method to subscribe to the publisher, and in the sync block, I can change the state of the label. If your future publisher can finish or fail, the subscription will return a completion enum object where you could use a switch to filter either the failure or finish cases. A trailing closure is also there for the received value, and you can use that value being passed if the future publisher was set up to publish a value. I'm going to tap one button at a time and wait for the task to complete. So this quick demonstration has proved that migrating a closure-based async task to use the future publisher is possible. If you have asynchronous processes in your code, future would be a good alternative if ever you're switching your app to use the combined framework.